Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with another session of BoatingTechTalk.com. So we've got a question from Jack. Jack asks, Jeff, I purchased two uh, 170 watt flexible solar panels for my boat. Can you recommend a controller, volts and amps? I watched your uh, 2018 boat show video where you talked about installing a fuse between the controller and the battery. What size type of fuse should I install? All right, two questions. Uh, not too bad. So first things first, when you're sizing a, a solar controller for a solar panel or a series or parallel solar panel, what you want to think about is a few variables. You want to think about, you know, what is best basically going to be the battery voltage. Is it going to be 12 volts, 24 volts? Is it 32 volts? Is it 48 volts? That's going to matter. So first thing is for most of us, it's going to be a choice between 12 and 24, right? The other voltages are not going to matter that much to most of us but know what your battery voltage is because most solar controllers are actually sized for a specific battery voltage and they don't allow both. Although some controllers do, but you got to figure that out. All right, first, so you know your battery voltage. Then you want to know what is the maximum wattage, right? That's going to come into the uh, solar controller. And now the maximum wattage uh, could be two panels in series or it could be two panels in parallel, right? Now, of course, the voltages are going to be different depending if you add the panels in series or in parallel, but the wattage won't. You still need to add the wattage, right? So if you've got 270 watt panels, you have a 340 watt solar array. And if you've got two 170 panels in parallel, you still have a 340 watt array. Now, this is key because when you size a solar controller, you're going to size it for the maximum wattage that is coming into for that solar array, right? And so in this case, you're looking for a solar control that is gonna allow up to 340 watts input. So that's another one. Now, you take that and then the other thing too that's important, there's also this maximum input voltage, right? So not all solar arrays, right? Um, some solar arrays have different input voltages because not all solar panels have the same voltage. And there's gonna also be another variable that's important is what is the maximum solar voltage? Now that's important because if you add the two panels in series, the voltage will actually, in this case, double. If you did three, it would be three times. But if you add the panels in parallel, the voltage is gonna stay the same. The current's gonna go up, and that's an important factor for sure, and that's gonna come in in wattage, right? And there's gonna be limitations on the maximum amperage that come in, but you're not gonna affect the overall high voltage. So if I had a boat with two 170 watt solar panels, it doesn't matter if it was wired in series or in parallel. What I probably would recommend to look at, popular choice, and it's not your only one because there's a lot of choice out there. The one we use the most is probably the Victron 100 slash 30, right? That's the one we uh, generally uh, use the most for these situations. And there's a model that comes with uh, Bluetooth and there's one that doesn't. And if you're looking at doing more, anything other than the vanilla or standard settings in your controller, um, one option is to actually buy a controller that has Bluetooth with uh, built in, and then you can use your app to control and to commission and also monitor your solar array. Some of us don't care for that, to be honest, not everyone does. And some of us are gonna buy just a Bluetooth dongle and change it every time we configure every controller. And if ever we wanna monitor solar, a CERN solar controller, then we plug in the Bluetooth dongle in it. So it really depends on how much of the monitoring you're going to do. And if you're going to do very little, then it might make sense to buy a Bluetooth dongle to do multiple controllers. Or if you only have one controller, then it's probably going to make more sense to just go ahead and buy the, blue, the controller with Bluetooth within because it's going to be about the same price as without plus the dongle. So that's what I would do. Um, and that's a great question. Now, the other second part was where do you install the fuse between the controller and the battery? Well, the fuse should be installed at the positive post of the battery or at the positive unswitched distribution of the battery, meaning a place that is always connected to the battery because a charger circuit, which a solar panel is, or solar controller, needs can be connected not on the load side, i.e. after the switch, but before the switch. So it has to be unswitched. It has to be always on. And so that's why you're gonna see in a lot of diagrams, they've got the, the little fuse connected right on the battery post. Now. <clears throat> It doesn't have to be on the battery post. In a lot of our boats, uh, including my own, and certainly a lot that we've worked on, we're gonna be always installing a positive unswitched distribution. And what you're looking for that is you wanna make sure that that distribution, right, does not 
is always, always on. So even if you turn the switch on or off on your boat, your source selector switch, that positive distribution is always on. And that's where you would actually bring your solar controller connection to, and you would put that fuse right there at the start of your positive unswitched distribution or directly on your positive post of your battery. So thanks for asking the question, Jack, and good luck for all of you tackling solar on your boats. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna get more of this cool content and also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, we've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.